Hello, this is Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter and Bernina Ambassador. And this is the Essential Ruler Quilting Challenge. This is week three, and this is design number two. We're going to stitch some curves that produce diamonds when we overlap the curves. Let's take a look. This is the ruler that we're using. And again, if you're using a different curve ruler, results will vary. Okay. Make sure you mark your sandwich accordingly. You want to mark the lines that I indicated in the instructions so that you can reproduce this pattern. Our first design, we used only one reference line on the quilt sandwich. This time, we're using two reference lines. And we're using a different part of the ruler. This is the side that we're going to use. You may notice I've added a few more arrows. Let's talk about that. Remember, our needle position and foot position need to be consistent in order to create a consistent design. And these arrows help us do that. Plus, there are lines or reference lines on the ruler. The combination of the reference lines on the ruler, the arrows that I put on the ruler, and the reference lines we mark on our quilt sandwich help us to create a repeatable design. So you want to mark the two lines the exact distance so you get the overlap and desired diamond shape. If the distance is larger or smaller, you're going to get a different look. And if you do, that's just another design. It's not a mistake. It's just another design. So let's go over the arrows. Why do I have these arrows? We're going to use the green arrows and this one right here. We're going to use the green arrows and this arrow in the middle. And there's also a reference line on the ruler. There's the edge of the ruler. Remember when we stitch from the edge of the ruler, we get a quarter inch distance. The ruler has two additional reference lines on it that mimic the curve of this ruler, this side of the ruler. We want to use the second reference line. So at the edge of the ruler, one reference line, and the second reference line. Sometimes the reference line can be hard to see depending upon the color of the fabric. That's another reason why I like to use these repositionable arrows. So, how do we place the ruler on the fabric to create this design? We're going to stitch just like this, one arc after another. And we want it, it to be consistent. And the arrows will help us place the ruler in a consistent way. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this center one as an example so you can really see how the arrows work. One thing that we're going to do is make sure that we have arrows that point to the position of the reference line. On the top, which is the starting point, and on the bottom. When we do that, we match it up. This is where the needle will stop. This is where the needle will start. We also are going to look at this second red line on the ruler, which is a reference line. It's a reference line that mimics this curve. We want that second line to rest on top of the reference line we drew on the fabric. So that's the first thing that I'll do. I will put that reference line right on top of the fabric. Then the next thing is to check the arrow positions to make sure that that is pointing where I want the foot to land. I want it to land right here and I want it to land right there. And one way to check, because it's been stitched already, you can see the quarter inch distance between what has been stitched and the edge of the ruler. But you can also, when you don't have thread and it's a blank sheet, a blank piece of fabric, 
you can take the measuring gauge to check. And if you notice, remember, we're always starting and ending on the reference line. So when we start, I can put this right here where I know I want to start. My needle's going to be right here. My needle's going to be right here. I've put the arrow where the second reference line is on the ruler, on top of the reference line, on the fabric. I know I want my needle to start here, my stitching. And once I put this measuring gauge here, I know where to place the point of my arrow because I know that's where I want the needle to start or stop. So you can see that is in line, that quarter inch distance, right? The same thing on this side. I want this arrow pointed at the spot. I want the needle to stop. And you can see the quarter inch distance as I put the measuring gauge around, you can see the quarter inch distance between the edge of the ruler and the stitching. And when I get to the green arrow at the bottom, you can see once the measuring gauge hits the reference line on the fabric, you can see the arrow is pointing at that location. Same thing at the top. Once the me measuring gauge gets to the top and touches the reference line on the fabric, you can see the arrow pointing to that location. So you know the arrows are exactly where you want. So now I know there are three ways that I'm going to check the position of my ruler. The first one is the second reference line on the ruler, which is a red line for this ruler. I put an arrow for that. I know I want to place that right on top of the reference line I've drawn on my fabric then I know I want the arrow to point right where I want to start. That's my needle position for the start of the curve. And then this is the needle position for where I want the needle to stop, the start and the stop. Now I'm ready to stitch the repeated distance of the arc across. I just keep moving it. I know that once I stitch from here to here, the needle's gonna stop here. And I double check my position on my ruler. I know I want it to stop here. So once my foot gets close to that arrow, I know that's where I want the needle to stop. And it should be on top of the reference line. Now, when you watch the video demonstration, you won't see these two green arrows. I've added these as an additional way to double check the ruler position. You can find multiple ways to check your ruler position for consistency and design. You can use two arrows on either end, or you can use one arrow in the center. You put on as many arrows as you need to make sure you have consistency in the design. Let's take a look at the video and watch how I stitch this out. So here we are. And again, I used only one arrow and I put it right next to the second line, reference line on the ruler. And I know I want that to rest on top of the reference line I marked on my quilt sandwich to get a repeatable, consistent, shape of the curve or the arc on the quilt sandwich. Once it's in position, I can stitch. And we're always starting on the reference line and then stopping on the reference line. Then we will shift the ruler. Another thing that you can do is that perpendicular reference line on the ruler, you want to make sure that it is perpendicular and not pointing upward or downward as you place the ruler. That's another way to ensure consistency of the ruler placement. You see how I'm double checking, making sure 
the ruler is in the right spot. Another tip I want to share with you is when you're stitching ruler quilting, you always want to be aware of how much pressure you're applying downward. Don't press too hard. You want to press lightly. Now we're going to stitch the other side of this design. And it's exactly the same thing, but we're doing it from the right-hand side. And you can always use the measuring gauge to check the consistency of the arc and how the overlap of the two arcs will appear in the final a stitching pattern. Now, the way I'm stitching right now is not necessarily what I would recommend. I'm stitching this way so that you can see from the camera. Normally, I wouldn't have my hand behind, but if I put it in front, you won't be able to see what I'm stitching. So this is not my normal hand position. Another thing I recommend with rulers that have what I call exterior or outside quilting, meaning that you're putting the ruler foot on the outside of the acrylic, on the edge. That can be a little tricky. So I would recommend if you're new to this is to wear a glove so that the ruler doesn't slip out of your hand and you go off the ruler. I hope those tips on how to use the arrows to help with consistent ruler placement are helpful. Again, use as little or as many arrows as necessary to help you place your needle and foot in the right position for starting and stopping. And remember, we started to practice on a small piece. I recommend that you stitch out this design on a larger piece so that you can see how this design looks on a larger area. Also, if you're so inclined, vary the distance between the overlap using this technique. You will get some new and interesting designs. I'm hoping that this inspires you to experiment. You can design your own ruler quilting patterns. 